Understand ODN in four minutes. ODN stands for Optical Distribution Network. ODN is a passive fiber infrastructure network. In fiber to the home, it is the network segment between the OLT and the ONT. Generally speaking, when a place is routed with optical fibers or optical cables, this place has an ODN. Examples include base station backhaul networks, passive optical LANs, and transport networks. In FTTH, the ODN normally covers 5 to 10 kilometers, and optical cables are laid over approximately 1 to 4 kilometers. ODN devices are deployed to extend these optical cables to users' homes. These devices include optical distribution frames, splitting and splicing closures, fiber distribution terminals, fiber access terminals, access terminal boxes, and terminal boxes. FTTH ODN can be divided into two points and three segments. The points are the optical distribution point and the user access point. The segments are the feeder fiber segment, distribution fiber segment, and drop fiber segment. From an engineering perspective, ODN can be divided into OSP and ISP. OSP refers to outside plant, and ISP refers to inside plant. From network coverage perspective, ODN can be divided into Home Pass and Home Connect. Home Pass is the network from the equipment room to the user access point. Home Connect is the network from a user access point to the ONT. Why there are so many ODN devices? Let's take a look at the network segment from the equipment room to users' homes. The engineering is very complex. After optical cables are routed from the equipment room, they pass underground, through outdoor streets, outdoor poles and installed walls, telecom risers inside buildings and are then routed indoors. Each of these opticals requires a different type of ODN devices. All these devices are essentially used for optical cable connection and protection. Inside the equipment room, the ODF is installed on concrete floors to connect devices to devices or to connect devices to optical cables. If equipment space is limited and high device capacity is not required, a 19-inch or 21-inch subrack can be installed in an integrated cabinet or a cabinet as the main device installation. Alternatively, the ODF can be mounted on the wall. The indoor environment is relatively good and requirements for ODF protection are not high, so IP2X is used for the ODF. After optical cables are routed from the ODF, they pass underground, through outdoor streets, outdoor poles and wall installations for home pass coverage. Under the ground, SSEs are used to prolong optical cables and to branch them to other places. Underground installations face a harsh environment. A high protection rating is required, usually IP68. In outdoor street deployment, FTTs are usually used to connect feeder fibers and distribution fibers. FTTs are often installed on the ground or on poles. IP55 or higher is adopted to ensure resistance against dramatic weather changes and harsh environments. When optical fibers are routed to outdoor poles or routed on walls for household connection, FATs or SSCs are normally used for the connection, distribution and termination of distribution fibers and drop fibers. The outdoor environment has high requirements for protection and either IP55 or IP65 are typically used. After the outdoor connection, optical cables are routed inside high-rise buildings or houses. In a high-rise building, FATs are used for the connection, optical splitting and distribution of optical cables. FATs are usually mounted on the wall. In these indoor environments, IP43 is adopted. Terminal flexible cables routed inside a room are terminated on the optical terminal so that fiber patch cords can be connected to the ONT. To differentiate indoor and outdoor splitting, a TB is installed near the door of the house. Then this TB is connected to the ATB installed indoors. TBs are installed on walls and require IP55 or IP65. An ATB is usually mounted on the wall or embedded in the wall and requires IP4X. This is how an OLT is connected to an ONT.